Well, I'm pleased to be joined now by the host of Inside Sports as well as Oilers Hockey on 630 Chad, Reed Wilkins. Reed, thank you for taking this time and joining me. I'm always happy to be on in the border city, Evan. Thanks for having me. Now, Reed, uh, obviously a 5-3 to three loss last night for the Oilers against the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, just starting things off, I guess what went wrong for the Oilers or maybe more so what went right for Vancouver last night? Well, I think it was a relatively sloppy game overall. And I think for the Oilers, they had some lapses in concentration and lapses in decision making. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, Adam Larson getting out of position on the first goal. A lot of people uh, out of position on, on a goal in the third period where the Oilers couldn't get the puck out of the line. And then Besser's left alone in front. Uh, player open for a rebound goal in the second period. So just some breakdowns like that. Players that I would think know better and know what they have to do, but didn't take care of those responsibilities. And I look, I, I don't think Vancouver played a perfect game either. I do think they were the better team, but you also look at a, a large stretch of the second period. McDavid got in behind the defense twice, drew fouls both times, probably should have had a penalty shot on one of them. Cahoon had a breakaway. Dreisaitl walked around U Levy and missed tucking in. He just hit the goalpost. So I think there were lapses both ways, probably more though by the Oilers and the, the Canucks were able to finish a couple more and get a couple of bigger saves, especially Holtby on Yamamoto with about 8.15 left in the third. He's wide open in front, would have tied at 4-4. Holtby makes the stop. Now you mentioned every single player from that second line on the Oilers last night, which is Yamamoto, Cahoon, and Dreisaitl, who I thought was their top line. I know today on Twitter you took the saying uh, that you thought similar. Just how do you think they can continue their success in you know, putting up points for the Oilers in tonight's game? Well, I think a big key to their success will be Yamamoto and his doggedness. And if he can keep that up here in his sophomore season – and it's going to be tough. I mean, teams will get used to playing against him and have more information on him. But he is so good at dogging pucks and being tenacious on players and keeping plays alive and stripping, well, I mean, everybody's bigger than him, but in some cases, much larger players of possession of the puck. And he did it last night. He nailed Edler with a pretty big hit and shook him up. I know Edler went back at him, but I think Yamamoto likes that. So I think his play is a big part of that. Dry settle, I think we know what we're going to get. And then we'll see where it goes with Cahoon. I thought overall a good game from him. He's just going to have to finish some of the chances that he gets. But that really, the, the line with Leon Dry has been the Oilers' top line since last December 31st, when Yamamoto came up, since December 31st, 2018. The, the line with Dry has been the Oilers' best line. And, uh, you, you know, I, I think Nugent Hopkins was given a lot of credit for that in the second half of last season. But I, I think it's, it's beyond that. I think Leon and Yamo have formed a pretty deadly pair here. Now, turning it over to the defensive side of the game, obviously five goals against, no team really wants to do that. Now, not all five of them were Miko Koskinen's fault, uh, but he did only have an 8.57 save percentage. Reed, do you think he gets the start again tonight for the Oilers? No, it's Mike Smith, and I think we'll see probably the, the Oilers have 12 back to backs. I, I would guess almost all of them will be split depending on what happens in the first game I mean maybe if a player has a goalie has a shutout or he's simply just vastly outplaying the other guy maybe he'd get to start back to backs yeah it wasn't on Koskinen last night but at the end of the day he was the second best goalie yeah I mean Holtby made I thought they were both pretty good through 40 minutes but in the third especially Holtby made the big saves and Koskinen didn't but the five goals against were on everybody not just the goaltender, but they, they did need a save or two to bail them out and, and, you know, really keep them within one instead of being down two most of the third. Now, Reed, final question here. Uh, each team was perfect on the PK, but that means that both power plays did struggle. I know it's tough to pick out one thing, but if you had to, you know, what would one thing be that the Oilers need to do in order for that power play to be clicking? Well, take more shots. They only had five shots on goal and four attempts. And they have a lot of unselfish players. And I think they all want to be unselfish and get other guys going. And Barry's the new guy. And I'm sure he wants to be deferential, but they wanted to get Barry a goal. I think they just got to fire away. I mean, clearly they're elite passers, but they passed up some shots yesterday 
where I would have expected just fired on net and either you score or hope for a rebound. So, you know, hopefully they, they get some more power plays again tonight. And I, and I would say just shoot, just, just blast away, make the goalie work. Well, it should be another exciting one tonight. Puck drop is at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Reed, thank you very much for, ta for joining me today. Hey, anytime. Thanks for asking me.